This recipe is sponsored by Squarespace. You can bake really good naan by just grilling it directly on your oven grates. I use the same method sometimes for pizza. You need no special equipment, and doing it this way has a lot of advantages. Is it the best homemade naan? Well, the texture is a little different than naan they bake in a tandoor in a restaurant. You can more closely imitate the real thing with the tawa method. I have a whole video about this in the description. You wet the bottom of the dough to make it sticky. You throw it into a hot, ungreased, Indian-style flat tawa or a Western-style cast-iron skillet like this works okay, too. You just cook it on the stovetop until you think the bottom is done. You can't actually look at the bottom, so you have to make an educated guess. Then you invert the pan. The bread sticks and hangs upside down while you cook the top over direct flame. It works okay on a resistance coil stove, too, but not on induction. Then, if you are able to unstick that from the bottom, the result is indistinguishable from non-baked in a tandoor. But this method is tricky. I burned the bottom a little bit there, and most significantly, you can only bake one small loaf at a time. With this oven method I'm going to show you right now, you could bake enough bread for a whole big dinner all at the same time. It's all equally hot and crisp at the same time, and it tastes really good. This method will work with any typical non-dough. This is my basic yeast non-dough, though I'm doubling it because this method is great for baking a lot of bread. Four cups of flour, like 500 grams, a couple of teaspoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. I use Morton Kosher, and that's not much salt. I'm assuming you're going to put more salt on top later. A teaspoon of baking powder. I get better bubbles if I use that in addition to the yeast. A couple of teaspoons of dry yeast. You can throw in the whole packet. Only about two tablespoons of yogurt. You could do a little more. It tastes good, but I find too much acid plus the yeast interferes with the gluten, and it makes the dough short or crumbly. A couple of tablespoons of oil and a cup of milk or water to start with. 200 mils to start with. Start mixing with a spoon and add just enough additional milk to make this come together. No more. I'm using bread flour today instead of all-purpose. All-purpose is fine, but bread flour has more protein, and more protein absorbs more water, so I might need a fair bit more milk. You won't know the moisture level for sure until you get in with your hand and really start kneading. Actually, I think I overshot it on the milk. More flour. Nearly every Indian recipe I've read for naan says the dough should be pretty dry, just barely sticky. And you don't have to knead it to death at this stage. Just get it reasonably smooth and elastic. The yogurt will make the surface look a little rough no matter how much you knead it. And see, just barely sticky. This is good. Cover it with a wet towel or something and let it rise until it's twice as big. At least an hour, probably two. While you wait, you can prepare your toppings. I'm just doing the standard garlic naan thing. I love it. Peel and chop a bunch of garlic, then chop a bunch of cilantro or coriander leaf, as they'd call it in India, and get a little melted butter handy, too. You could instead make a no-yeast dough, which is also traditional. My version of that recipe is in the description. It's very similar, but instead of yeast, you use a lot of yogurt with active bacterial cultures in it. For me, I found the key is to let this dough sit overnight. It rises much more slowly, but here we are the next day, and check how puffy that is. I think this makes naan with better texture, but I think the yeast dough makes naan with better flavor. This is the yeast dough after a couple of hours. I'll punch it down and divide it into maybe four chunks, maybe knead them just a little bit more, and shape them into balls. This will make four loaves that are each twice the size of the one that I did in the pan at the beginning of the video. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, you could wash your hands before you do it. Cover those, let them rest for at least 15 minutes, and they'll roll out much easier. Right before I roll, I will do myself a favor and throw a baking sheet or a big piece of foil onto the bottom rack of my oven. Stuff is going to fall, and this will catch it and make cleanup really easy. Time to turn on the top element that Americans call a broiler, while Brits and people formerly colonized by Brits call a grill. I love this thing. It gets red hot in seconds and will replicate the intense direct heat of a tander. Grab a dough ball and roll it out almost as thin as you could possibly roll it. You might need some flour to keep things from sticking, or you might not. Get your toppings and smear them on, then roll them into the surface hard. For this oven method in particular, it's important that you get them really stuck in there. And hey, the virtue of this method is we can do multiple loaves at once, so let's prep another one. I could actually fit all four of these in at once if I wanted to. Take those over to the oven, and this part feels real weird. Flip the dough around and put it topping side down 
down under the broiler, or what you might call a grill. Don't worry, the baking pan is going to catch anything that falls through the grates. It's really easy to just plop those in with your hands because Nando is very sturdy and not sticky. Close the door to maximize the heat in there, and here we are after just two minutes. If you get any giant bubbles like that, you might want to tamp them down before they burn. Not with your hand, you dingling. Use your tongs. Bake a little bit more, and then you can just flip these around whenever the first side is golden. There's no guesswork. You can see exactly what's happening. These just needed 30 more seconds. And the top side will need a minute at most. I think a defining feature of naan is the top has some brown bubbles, but most of the surface is still doughy. That contrast is key. Why do we have to do this on the grates? Why can't we just put the dough on a baking sheet? Because the baking sheet would actually shield it from much of the heat. The dough would take too long to bake. You wouldn't get those big steam bubbles inflating, and the inside would be dry by the time the outside was brown. I find this method does a better job of imitating the intense heat of a tandoor than even a really hot pizza stone does. Naan doesn't seem to bubble upright on a pizza stone. I don't know why, but there you go. All you do now is brush it with some melted butter. If your butter is unsalted, you probably want to either dissolve some salt in the butter or sprinkle some salt on top. Flavor-wise, that tastes just like restaurant naan. The top and the internal structure of it, just like restaurant naan. The bottom is the only thing that's different. It's smoother and a little less crispy than it would be from a tandoor or a tawa. It's not bad, it's just a little different. Now, what if you don't feel comfortable reaching into that hot oven to deposit the dough on the grates? Well, just do this. Roll out your loaf as before, top it, flip it upside down on the counter, and then gently roll it up around your rolling pin. Take it over to the oven, let your rolling pin reach inside there, and you just gently roll it out, topping side down. That method is particularly useful if you want to bake one giant loaf. And what could be easier? One giant loaf. Cut it up and everybody gets their bread in one go. If you bake a lot of loaves in succession, though, you might start to get them sticking on the grates like that. That's from the grates getting dirty and or from the grates getting really hot under the broiler, which you might call a grill. If this happens to you, the solution is to treat your oven grates like the grates on your grill, what Americans call a grill, while Brits and people formerly colonized by Brits call a barbecue. This is my outdoor grill scraper that I'm using to clean this up, and all the junk falls onto that pan below. If you still have any trouble with sticking, you can do another outdoor grill slash barbecue trick and grease the grates with an oily paper towel. No need to clean them after, such a tiny film of oil is just going to burn off. You do that and sticking is impossible, but I only had problems with sticking after I'd been baking naan on my grates for hours, which you probably would never do because the whole virtue of this method is that you can bake all your naan at once, just as you can get everything done at once at Squarespace. Everything you need to buy or make in order to create and run a website is here at squarespace.com. There's no baking one loaf at a time. It's all done at once. The basic design and layout, done. Just pick a template suitable to your purpose, a store, a wedding announcement, whatever. Change the fonts and the colors and styles for the whole site with one click. Don't have any original photos of your own? No problem. Search for a stock photo right here in Squarespace. Everything is in Squarespace. And when your site is fully baked, Squarespace gives you everything you need to actually use it. They host the site for you. They handle any money transactions you may be doing on your site, any inventory, sales, taxes, receipts, email lists, appointment scheduling. You run it all right here in Squarespace, where you can also register a domain name. And you can do that, or you can publish your site for 10 percent less by using my code at checkout, Ragusia. That's in the description. Save 10% with Ragusia. Thank you, Squarespace. And thank you, Broiler Slash Grill. Or Broiler Stroke Grill. The Brits usually say stroke, not slash. Do they say stroke in India or slash?